An army of 300 soldiers, another on horseback on a Segway, or an army made up entirely of volunteer civilians. Make yourself comfortable. Here are the 10 most embarrassing armies in the world. You are most certainly familiar with the Vatican, maybe even been there. But did you know that in addition to being the smallest state in the world, the Vatican has another particularity? No. So if you want to know, keep your ears open. First of all, you should know that the Vatican, an enclave of Rome in Italy, does not have armed forces, but Swiss guards. It is a small force maintained by the Holy See, which is responsible for the personal security of the Pope, as well as that of the Apostolic Palace. In principle, Vatican City has never been at war with anyone, but the popes must be protected. You will say then, but what does Switzerland have to do with it? That's where I would answer that five centuries ago, Switzerland had serious economic worries that forced it to send its men abroad as mercenaries. This is how the first popes recruited these Swiss mercenaries, as did several European powers. Thus, in 1502, Pope Julius II founded the Pontifical Swiss Guard as a personal bodyguard and not as an army in the strict sense. This is probably why the members of the Guard only have small arms and the famous halberds traditional. Today, the 134 Swiss Guards you see there still retain the atypical customs and accessories they held in the Renaissance era and which inevitably recall the most colorful outfits of the theater of yesteryear. But don't be fooled. So, eccentric accoutrements. The Swiss Guards are one of the most talented armies in the world. In order to be recruited, they had to meet several requirements and criteria of the Holy See, namely to be of Catholic faith and obviously unmarried of Swiss nationality, to be between 19 and 30 years old, to be at least 1.75 meters tall, and to have completed the basic training with the Swiss Army with certificates of good conduct. This little history lesson may have brought back old memories from class, but let's face it, you learn a lot when you see pictures of the army. You are impressed by the endless rows of soldiers, all perfectly lined up on their guards, at least when it happens in big countries like China, North Korea, Russia, or the United States. But in Sao Tome and Principe, it's a little different. Would you like to discover a unique army in the world? We're off to Africa in this small island state of some 200, 11,000, 28 people. You will tell me that with such a large population, there is no need for an army. And yet, one is missing. A very small army of 300 men, the army of Sao Tome and Principe, is, therefore, a small force that has no resources at its disposal and would be totally ineffective. The army complains of several other problems, including infantry equipment that is considered obsolete, low wages, and harsh working conditions. The tasks of this small army include ensuring a permanent presence throughout the national territory, securing critical infrastructure, and combating threats to sovereignty. I'm not sure that the 300 men alone will be able to do all that. Surprised to learn that such a small army exists, believe me, you are not at the end of your pain. Now that you know that an army can consist of only 300 men, you'll have something to impress your friends with in your next round of trivia. Imagine yourself on holiday in Mauritius. You have already spent a few very relaxing days. Discovered the places, the sumptuous beaches, and the dreamy landscapes. But something intrigues you? You notice that throughout your stay, you have not heard of anything related to a Mauritian army. Sounds intriguing, doesn't it? Come out of your reverie and find out why. There is no military force on the whole of Mauritius, but that is simply because the island does not have one at all. And yes, none. On the other hand, the order and security of the country are maintained by a force of 10,000 members who are all under the command of the commissioner of police. The national police force consists of 8,000 police officers who ensure civil order. The 1,400-strong special mobile force and the 500-strong coast guard are the only two paramilitary forces on the island. So don't panic, I can assure you that you are safe, even if you don't see any armed forces on the horizon. Now you can go back to your quiet tanning session. You have chosen Monaco for a short weekend to rest and recharge your batteries. That's good because I promise you'll learn some interesting things on top of that. Every day, just before noon, you will certainly be among the tourists who crowd the square in front of the princely palace to attend the traditional changing of the guard ceremony. You will notice these, little soldiers all dressed in white or blue, who seems to come straight out of the tail the steadfast tin soldier. At this point, you will say to yourself that it is just unrealistic that such elegantly dressed soldiers have been empowered to wage war. Well, just think, if at the same time, to defend these 38,682 Monegasque inhabitants, there is no need for guns or tanks, these soldiers blend in perfectly with their environment. The blue of the sky, the green of the waves, and the scent of a long-lasting summer as the Principality is undoubtedly one of the richest in the world. 
It is normal that these soldiers are drawn to the four pins in Monaco. Soldiers don't get dirty, of course. Their specialty is the spectacular fanfares of the Prince's Carabinieri which entices tourists and which takes place during the change of guard ceremony in September. And incidentally, they have a duty to protect Prince Albert II and government institutions. Needless to say, we're exaggerating a bit. Contrary to what their attire suggests, Monegasque soldiers are trained to deal with anything that might affect their territory, including terrorist attacks, and to protect the property of the inhabitants. The 119 senior members, the 135 fire and civil defense forces, and the carabinieri are always on the lookout. So, if you're planning to walk around with your savings on you, don't worry, the little white soldiers of Monaco will protect you. It seems that Japan is not as safe as you think. I'm sure you'd like to know why this country wouldn't be secure, since it is, after all, one of the world's greatest powers. I will tell you. Well, that's because, despite its 126 1.5 million inhabitants, this island country has no army to speak of due to its recent desire to become a pacifist country. Okay, I know you don't understand anything I'm saying, so I'll explain everything in detail. The Japanese Constitution of 1946 contains an article, Number 9, which states that the country renounces war and therefore decides to abolish its army and its imperial navy after losing the Pacific War to the United States from Japan. It is strictly forbidden to have an army to attack other countries. On the other hand, since they have to defend themselves, they have the right to have troops to defend and ensure order and peace in the country. This is where the self-defense army comes into play. It was formed in 1954 and is composed of a self-defense maritime force of 44,000 members, a self-defense air force of 45,600, and a self-defense land force of 157,000 soldiers. Now, I know what that sounds like. It's hard to believe at first, but after all, wouldn't it be an example to follow? As you know, Iraq has only just emerged from a long civil war against the Islamic State that has been plaguing the country for several years. But there's one thing you don't know about his army. Some time ago, as the ultra-radicals of the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant incited their members to march to Baghdad, hundreds of men from across the country gathered outside the Iraqi army's volunteer recruitment center to defend their country. Men who have never been trained for war have joined the Iraqi armed forces. Such a decision has certainly helped the country's armed forces to avoid a total and catastrophic collapse. But on the other hand, the risks taken were high since new recruits not trained in the arts of war could risk their lives due to a lack of professional knowledge. Today, in some parts of Iraq, there are at least as many Shiite gunmen and civilian volunteers as there are regular soldiers. I know that seeing images of war is always off-putting and unpleasant, but at least now you know that the Iraqi army is not just made up of soldiers. You must surely know that each country normally has its own army, air force, and navy. Well, maybe not all. Do you know that there is a country that has neither an army nor an air force? Yes, everything happens in the water. Do you want to know which country it is? So, a little dip is in order. But before that, you'll have to travel thousands of miles to land in the Bahamas. This small Caribbean country has a population of about 385,000. No wonder there is no land army that would want to leave this clear, heavenly water. Of course, like any country, the Bahamas probably has enemies too. But to counter them, the navy is in charge. Under the Defense Act, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force has been tasked with defending and securing the entire territory, protecting the integrity of the territory, patrolling the waters of the territory, rescuing the population in the event of natural disasters, and, most importantly, maintaining law and order. As you can see, there are no tanks, no armored vehicles, and military trucks. The Bahamian Defense Forces are entirely naval. But contrary to what you might think, there is nothing idyllic or relaxing about being a soldier in the Bahamas. The naval force undergoes heavy and laborious training. In fact, one of the most common training practices is to have a soldier swim 3 kilometers with an 18-kilogram backpack on his back. Do you feel breathless just imagining the scene? Catch your breath, there is still an army that we haven't talked about yet. You're used to seeing police officers on armored trucks, motorcycles, or even horses. How would you like to see police officers using other means of transportation? An unusual form of transportation, for example. Welcome to China, a country where the definition of the army is not the same as in other countries. Indeed, during the 2008 Summer Olympics, China, this great world power, had the idea of investing in its Segway for the benefit of anti-terrorist forces. This is to ensure the safety of the athletes and the public. For example, 
For several months in Shandong province, China's elite police trained in simulation exercises in preparation for a possible terrorist attack during the Beijing Summer Games. The Segway allows soldiers to control the balance and maneuverability of the machine, keeping both hands on their weapon while accelerating and turning the machine with their body movement. The machine also allows them stability during a possible shooting. It is indeed rare to see soldiers in such positions now if you are asked about the Chinese army. You will have something interesting and unusual to say about it. So, what do you think of these unusual armies? Tell us what you think in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the bell to receive all the notifications and not miss anything from our upcoming content.